You're listening to Real Talk with Toya, Lex, and Chris. This is a podcast where we take the time to reflect, embrace our past, talk about life, or just sit back and laugh. You'll get a front row seat of what it's really like to be in our group chat. Let's start the show. Another episode of Real Talk with Toya, Lex, and Chris. I am Toya. I'm Alexis. And Kristen is missing today, uh, <laughs> but we, in, in her place, we have a special guest, and her name is Raven, and she's going to be kind of chiming in on this good topic that we have tonight. But before we get started, and before, you, before we let you know what our topic is, we're going to do a <laughs> this or that question. Okay, so... Raven, would you like to pick a number between one and 30? Um, I'll do 14. 14. Okay. Dang, did we do this one already? Okay. So um, would you rather have the ability to change your past or change something that will happen in the future? I would say change my past. Change your past. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Alexis, what about you? Um, I don't think we've done this one. Uh, okay. I think I would change my past. You would change your past? <laughs> yeah, I think I had to agree. I think I would change my past. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think my future would be a whole lot different. Yeah, me too. Yeah, that's that's, what I that's think. true. That's true. That's true. At least change some parts about it, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I, so I literally had said the other day, can I just go back to 19? Just let me go back to that age right there. Me too. I think 19 was the the, the year for me that kind of <laughs> transformed the rest of my life. <laughs> if I could go back to 19, I would just be a little more wiser. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, yeah, after high school, right there at college. Yeah. Yeah, shipping yeah. some things. Yeah. yeah, just a little bit. So, yes. So with that being said, that's that's like a great number to pick Um, that jumps right into our topic of single and dating, but also a single parent and dating. And Mm -hmm. we are going to get Raven's side of being a woman, a single mom and dating. So, Raven, if you just want to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, you know, what you do, how many kids you have, um, et cetera. Okay. so I'm Raven. I'm Raven. I'm 30. Um, Born and raised in the eastern part of North Carolina, a small town called Runner Rapids. A lot of people probably never heard of it. (laughs) Um, Currently, I mean, I reside in Raleigh and I came to the area in 2010. I went to North Carolina Central. Eagle Prize. I went to North Carolina Central. (laughs) So I got my um, bachelor's and my master's degree there. So I got my bachelor's in 2014. And I got my master's in 2018, and I'm currently employed um, with the Department of Health and Human Services as a consultant. Um, I do have an eight-year-old, Imani. I will name her Imani. So um, interesting thing about that is I had her in my last um, semester of college, undergrad. So um, I kind of had to grow up kind of faster more you know than the rest of my peers because I had a you know a little baby but the good thing about it is I still graduated on time in 2014 had her in January graduating in May so um she's been with me like through through a lot we've been through a lot (laughs) (laughs) but I mean I mean we made it and we're I mean we're doing fine so that's That's just a little backstory of me yeah That's awesome. So when you were in college, when you were, you said you had her in January and graduated Mm -hmm. in May. Mm -hmm. So did you have a lot of help to be able to do that? Um, yes and no. And I'm going to say no, because, um, me just personally, I mean, my parents are kind of young still, like they weren't your average grandparents. Like my parents just turned like they're in their fifties, like early fifties. So you can do the math. <laughs> um, so I knew by me deciding um, to have her that she would be my responsibility. I didn't have the luxury, of, you know, like some people to send your child home and 
have parents or grandparents raise your child while you finish school like I was like yeah she has to I mean and just for me personally how I am as a person I would just wouldn't send my child away there's no you know shade to anybody that does because mm-hmm. you have to do what's best for you um but she was with me and I had um two friends two of my close friends we were all roommates so they were really oh, helpful wow. and then yeah and then my mom actually stayed up here in Raleigh so I mean I had a little you know I mean I had it was support, there. But, <laughs> yeah, it, it was there, but I just didn't like to bother people too much because I'm like, she's my responsibility. So, yeah. Oh, wow. So, and you are how old? 30. I just turned 30. No, when you oh, had, I had her. her. When I had her, I was 21, about to be 22. So our birthdays are literally two weeks apart. Hers oh, is wow. January 7th and mine is the 21st. So like, I had her, then I turned 22. <laughs> so, so wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, kudos to you for look, making it to 30 and keeping her alive. I know. I know. <laughs> like, eight year old, and she's, I mean, a lot of people looked at her and I was like, oh my God, I remember when you was pregnant with her. A lot of people remember that. And she's like a big girl because a lot of people watch her grow up on social media. Like, mm-hmm. as I think impact. I met you when you just had her at. Mm-hmm. Um, at legacy yeah. To, yeah at legacy i think you yeah. just had her she was like maybe three months old when i started working there yeah, yeah. Now she's second grade about to go to third and i'm just like oh my god like well, slow down you. a little bit man i had his hand on you he did he really oh, did definitely. Yeah, so with really that being did. said what is what is raven's definition of dating in today's society <sighs> <laughs> I don't know if I have what definition. I mean, just <laughs> society today has kind of like ruined my definition of dating. I feel so mm-hmm. stupid having the definition that I have because I'm more intentional with dating just because I mean I'm a you know, I'm a parent. Like when I think mm-hmm. about dating, like I mean, I don't like, I know people say date multiple men, you know, just date around and stuff, but I can't, I can't do, I, can't, I don't get with that. Like, it's only one person that I'm really going to like. And then when I like that one person, it's just that one person, but that's kind of a downfall too, because they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do because, um, uh, most of the guys that I ran into, like they want to date multiple women. <laughs> so it's kind of like, I mean, what do you do? Like, do you just yeah. stand in line and pick a number or do you just move? Like, I don't know. Because I'm like, I'm more intentional. They're like, no, you're supposed to date around and stuff like that. But it's so draining to me, to me mm-hmm. personally. Like, I'm just more intentional with dating. Like, I just want to, you know, meet a guy, we vibe well, and I'm dating him and only him. I don't want to date him and then other people. Like, mm-hmm. that's just weird to me. But I mean, yeah. um, I can that, see that though, because it is draining to put. It's draining. You don't know everybody's personality will be the same, so yeah. you kind of gotta go up and down with it. Yeah, and then for me, just as a single parent, like I know the end goal, I want to be married, so um, I have to think about my daughter too. Like, if I already see a guy is they on you know, some other stuff, they don't want to be married, then you're automatically eliminated because I'm not going to waste my time because mm-hmm. I have to think about her too. And I don't, consistency is very important to me. And I'm like, if you can't be consistent in the talk, well, they say it's a talking talk stage. So I guess we get I, it just, <laughs> That's what I was trying to figure out. Some people, they deem talking and dating the same. And then some people think deem yeah. talking and then they mm-hmm. and are different. So I'm confused myself. Like what I'm is confused it? too. Like when I got back out here, they like, oh, it's a talk. And I'm like, talk about what? Like <laughs> they're talk. Talk. Right? Yeah. I'm like, we talk like what do you mean talk? Like I, I was so confused. Like, um, they're like, you know, it's a talking stage, then then a dating stage, then you in the that's, that's too many stages for me. Like <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I so the talking stage is just like where you just communicate and like over the phone text messages or whatever and then yeah. when you are actually like go out to dinner or whatever the date is I guess that's considered that dating. Day? No what they what, what I was told people <laughs> what I gathered <laughs> is dating is you're going like you can talk to multiple people like I'm talking to multiple 
I'm not saying I do right now. <laughs> Talk to multiple guys on the phone, text multiple guys, but then dating, you're also like, I guess, going out on dates with multiple Doing the guys. same thing, but going outside yeah. of the house. Yeah, until you yeah, want to be exclusive with one. And I'm just like, and there's so many men that are, that's what they want. So it's kind of hard to find one who's on the same page, mm -hmm. you know, with me. Yeah, so do so you ask that question off the bat when you meet someone you vibe with? Like, okay, look, what is your your steps almost like so do you consider this talking yeah. or are we dating yeah. or yeah I asked them when they're looking for them they like oh I'm on the box cut <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know and it's that's when I'm running into and a little bit about me like I didn't mention I was previously engaged so I went through like that whole broken off engagement like um mm -hmm. during the pandemic so that was kind of that was a lot Mm -hmm. So now I'm trying to get back out there and it's like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. Just, yeah. Was it a little bit easier when you were in the dating stage, when you met the person you were previously? Oh, yeah. With? Okay. Yeah. So things and, have and just changed. Thing. Yeah. So with <laughs> him, um, I, you know, I won't, you know, bad mouth him, but <laughs> the good thing about him is he was very intentional. He was like, I want you. And he applied, like they say, applied pressure. He did mm -hmm. that. So he kind of eliminated everybody mm -hmm. else. And he showed me that he wanted me and only me. So I'm like, maybe that relationship was just to teach me that it's out there. And you yeah. know, when a man really wants you, he'll come and get you. Cause he yeah. did, he literally came and got me. Cause I didn't want him. I, like when I met my ex fiance, I didn't really, I was fine being single. I didn't want a relationship or nothing. I told him that I was like, <laughs> he was like, I want to, I was like, no, I'm just trying to, you know. <laughs> so you were the one that was vibing at that time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he changed my mind though, because the other yeah. guys, they weren't doing the things that he was doing. He was taking me on dates and, you know, being consistent. They weren't. So I'm like, why am I going to waste time with, you know, these guys that really, they're not doing anything that he mm -hmm. wants, you know. Well, he won't awesome. I mean, well, that was awesome of him to be intentional yeah. about it. Um, if, yeah. if this is not too much to ask, what yeah. what shifted? Honestly, he didn't want to be married. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, that's that's what that's what boils down to it. He didn't want to be married, I guess, to me, because I mean he's engaged now again. So, but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he engaged that happened. again now. It happens, and I'm like, happens. I, 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 mean, I don't understand, you know, so soon, but I mean, yeah. hey. So, I mean, sometimes that's how people move on. I don't know. They just, they go. Yeah, and them. what I've learned is uh, a lot of men, not just him, but even some of the guys I've talked to are my male friends. They like, that's how they get over somebody. They get up under somebody, but mm -hmm. honestly, when they do that, it never really lasts because I mean, women, I think when we go through something like that, we take the time to hear, we won't talk to nobody. I didn't want to talk mm -hmm. to nobody. I didn't want to come out the house. <laughs> <laughs> Heartbroken. Yeah. yeah. They can, they have the ability to just get up and move on so fast. And it's just like, you know, I wish I had the ability, but you know, we're women, like we're more in tune with our emotions, like how they heal is they jump to the next thing, but then it hits them later while we, yeah, you when you've already healed. Yeah. yeah. So with that going with with that happening to you, how did it impact your daughter? Oh, she was hurt. Me and her both were crying. Mm -hmm. So that's oh. why now it's like I'm kind of more um uh, I don't know the word, but I'm just like more I don't know the word to say. I'm just more observing and I'm just in like tune. Yeah, in tune. I'm just not playing with anybody coming around her. Mm -hmm. And they had a great relationship. And I felt like, you know, despite anything, like, I felt my intuition was right with him. I just don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I prayed. I like, I did the right thing. I went to God. I prayed. I'm like, so what happened, you know? Yeah. But, you know, sometimes, you know, people, I mean, things change and yeah. people have free will. So, yeah, that is yeah. very true. I mean, yeah. you and, that, and that's the thing is like one of those. Sometimes you can drag relationships past their point mm -hmm. and in tune, you you are the one that ends up getting hurt in, in the aspect of it all. Um, yeah. But at the same time, they may be dealing with it as well. Um, yeah. Just in a different way. Yeah, yeah like, it was just, yeah, it was caught off guard. Cause I'm like, we didn't send save the dates. Like this three months before our wedding. Oh, wow. Everything, yeah. We had so y'all didn't planned it at all. 
everything. Yeah. Yeah. So that and was, you that said was, it happened during the pandemic. Yeah, we were supposed to get married in September 2020. We broke up in June. And oh, that was wow. devastating because we yeah. went to college together. So everybody looked, you know, and then you know how men, I mean, they get on social media. He's like, he's living the best time mm -hmm. <laughs> of his life. And I'm here crying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, what? What? How dare you? <laughs> how dare wow. you have the best time? But it was a point where, you know, he tried to reconcile, come back, and all that. But then, yeah, I just end up having yeah, a lot of yeah. edit issues keep playing now. So, yeah. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Were you, are you at a place or have you arrived at a place of forgiving that part of your life or, <laughs> or him, rather, I should say? Um, to be completely honest, no, not 100%. No, it's still yeah. fresh. It's still new. Yeah, it hasn't been that's years. a lot. And, yeah, and then it's like after I got through one, you know, one heartbreak, here goes something else. He in a relationship, then he, in, you know, like mm -hmm. it's like, oh, keep boom, like good. I'm like, I can't even catch my breath first. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you hyperventilating over there, like, where my bag at? <laughs> and it's to the point where you know I had to. From that, I had to block, you know, on social media, mm -hmm. change my number because I'm like, you playing, like, and then, yeah. you know, so, but us being, you know, going to the same college, we know a lot of mutual people and people voluntarily bring me information. I'm like, I don't yeah. go looking for it. What do y'all yeah. get out of that? Leave it that was, that's the hard part. Cause I don't know, like, I wouldn't even know that if somebody wouldn't have told me cause I oh, literally yeah. don't check for him. Yeah. Yeah. And that's best to be like that, especially when you're trying to heal. Right? Yeah. Trying It'd to be heal. hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's still hard especially when I'm single still and then I'm out here dealing with the men now and they just, <laughs> <laughs> just so, they so just let me ask it. you this how long was it before you introduced your daughter to him how long did you take honestly it wasn't even long I just felt I, I I feel like I discerned very well like I didn't have no doubts or anything that he wasn't mm. a good person he, he did he treated her well like she started calling him dad because he was around you know mm. so it was very short just because um at the time I was in grad school and it was just me and her so I'm like look if you want to meet up and go on a date my she was two three I think she was three at the time my three-year-old gonna have to come mm. like okay well, bring her on so I mean she kind of they kind of met that way like on the oh wow unscheduled date so mm -hmm. yeah interesting and how did how did what kind of date was it like was it like a dinner thing or did y'all do something fun no we went somewhere dinner? simple like Chili's because it was after class and I was like I'm hungry we're going to get something to eat so he was like well I'll meet y'all there and I, that's how they met and she was like who are oh. you like, <laughs> was she but like I'm after, coming with the questions yeah but yeah, they got along very well. So it was kind of hard for her. She's now at a place you don't ask about them or, you know, anything okay. now. So she's good now. Yeah, I can only imagine. And, you know, again, because we are women, she's a little girl. So yeah. she, her emotions were probably really tied into that. And she probably it was. Really that. She was devastated. And that's one thing that I kind of beat myself up about. But it's like I couldn't control that. You know, somebody decides to leave. You can't, you know, we try to protect our children, but I couldn't. I couldn't really control that. Yeah. And I was didn't see more, it coming. Yeah, I didn't see it coming at all. At all. No red. I didn't see it coming. Um, so that was kind of, yeah, that was hard. I bet it was. What do you think now has changed men in dating? What do you think is influencing this different, like, have, I don't know. I think every, I think you should. Until you get to a place of like, okay, I want to really settle down. I mean, to each his own. If you want to have multiple people, have have your multiple yeah. people. But live your truth and be honest about it up front. Like, don't have me feeling like, okay, you're going to call me at 7 and I'm waiting. It's 7.30, 8 o'clock and you out living your best life. Like, that's, to me, I'd rather you be up front. Like, hey, look, I'm not really on that page. What do mm -hmm. you think influenced yeah. men to really feel like they can just ghost women the way they ghost women? Or has it always been there? It probably has, um, but we just didn't know about it. I think social media plays a lot, just a lot, but <laughs> people want to live this life and portray to be, you know, just impress people like social media. They want to seem like they live in their best life. They got multiple women. It's just, and then social media provides that access for them to talk to multiple women. Cause I have, you know, men that they in my inbox, but they ain't worth replying to, but you know, that's what they do. They mm -hmm. lurk and, you know, they find women 
you know, they look at their parents, if they're attractive, they go for it or, you know. Yeah, it's just crazy. So. It's just crazy. It's just, I mean, like I said, I'm, as, as a mom and as a, a single mom, I haven't even <laughs> opened that door more so because oh I am nervous about it. Because just a based yeah. on what people have said about how hard it is. And I'm one of those as well. I'm, I want to be intentional. I can't. Yeah, I you could be and like I, I got sure. about five people in the lineup, and it's just I can't give five people the same thing. I can't do it. Yeah. it. I can't do it. Yeah, and a lot of them want you to be an option. I'm like, I'm not about to be an option. Like, I'm sorry, no, because yeah. I had someone choose me first out the rip. So no, I'm not. No, yeah. I'm not okay. But they they you want you to be okay. Like. With it. And it's like they want to date you but they still want to date around so I'm like when do men stop wanting to date because honestly <laughs> truthfully some of them still do it while they're married like and that's that's you know that's another topic but <laughs> they do it while they're married they mm-hmm. never want to you know they still always want to have their options open that's crazy though because having that many people like how many like having options is a lot of work it's a lot of work. Like that's a lot of conversations in a day. Like that's a lot of like telling you my information and you telling me information. And I gotta remember which person told me that this. you told it to. Like I, you gotta go back and look through text messages. It's like don't call me, just text me so I can keep track of everything. Yeah. Like, yes. yeah. like you know, a trigger for me is good morning. I don't know why because I feel like <laughs> they said it's multiple people. Group yeah. that you yeah. group like, good morning, like, I don't, I don't even want to reply. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, how was your day? I'm like, I'm tired of that. And don't say send me a picture because that's an automatic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Picture. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't even <laughs> know what to do with that. And then now having a kid is like, um... yeah. I think it's a maturity thing and it's the ego thing for men. Like they just they get a thrill off of having multiple women on them. And that's why for me, when I meet men like that, I don't stroke their ego. Like they don't like it because I don't do that. I don't do what the other mm-hmm. women do. Mm-hmm. They want to fall to their knees and you know, I'm not yeah. with that. Yeah. yeah. Do you find it is more in is it all ages of men or younger or older or I mean, I really haven't dated older, but I'm open to it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I turned 30, so I was like, I can go up to 40 now, to be honest, but I haven't <laughs> met anybody um, yet, and I really yeah. don't know where to meet people either, like, I mean, I'm about to say, how do you meet people, like, how, what, like, what settings are, like, age appropriate to meet someone that you could remotely say, oh, I'm, I'm dating, and mm-hmm. I met you at the bar or yeah. at church. Or, or and like I mean I don't really go out to like a club like I'm not a club person I will go to like a day party here and there a lounge or you know just something where mm-hmm. a lot of young professionals are or you know to brunch or if I go out of town but I mean I really haven't had any luck either I mean recently I mean texting people but like to say I'm dating right now no mm-hmm. I'm not dating anyone don't nobody text me good morning I mean <laughs> it's I don't go on any dates. Like I'm not dating. I can say I'm. But do men something. even ask to go out on dates? Like I, I don't even know. Like it's all. I almost feel like it's like, can we hang out? It. That's yeah. what it is. A it's win. always, can I hang out? So you yeah. know what? When I hear that, I'm like, all right, I know I'm an option at this point. Like, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Like, they don't take do the time to plan a date, and it's just kind of frustrating because I mean. I shouldn't have to do that and I don't I mean not to be picky but I'm just like I'm just not going anywhere like this that you make you know just do something together you didn't even have no thought like Mm -hmm. do you think it's our responsibility as women to let them know that off top like in order for you to even be interested in me or have that conversation like at the beginning like if you're interested in me you need to plan this stuff out versus yeah saying you know I want to kick it or whatever yeah because I mean to be to be honest, like there's a lot of women like that too, like that just want to vibe or just kick it or yeah, it's a lot don't want to date around, you know, and stuff like that. Like, yeah, I think you should because I mean, I remember one time with my ex, like in the beginning, I was like, um, he was like, let's go. Um, what do you want to do? I was like, look, in order, you know, for this thing to work, just plan something and tell me where to show up. And after that, smooth sailing, mm-hmm. <laughs> like. He plans yeah, I mean, that. it's easier because yeah. I mean yeah. I don't know why people think that we just sit around and don't have nothing else on our plates yeah. to where they think oh let's just do something 
So you want me to plan it too? Like, but you're initiating <laughs> it. Like you're yeah. initiating it. Can you at least just say, let's meet here at seven o'clock and yeah. boom. And it, yeah. And especially like for us, we're parents. So, I mean, you have to, you just can't tell me off the whim, like, oh, let's go. Mm-hmm. I have a child. I have to make sure she's, you know, taken care of before I can just go anywhere, you know? So mm-hmm. they have to be considered of that. So I do let them know that up front, like, yeah. You know, so do you let let the guys know up front that you're a mom or like how how is that process yeah like I do I don't someone? like to catch nobody off guard like mm-hmm. because I am and she's you know she's a, I wouldn't hide my child from anybody right I mean mm-hmm. some men they don't like to date women with kids I mean mm-hmm. I respect that and I don't want to date you if you don't <laughs> you know yeah. date somebody with kids because we're a package deal eventually she's going to have to be brought into the picture right yeah so she yeah is. And she gonna have to give her perspective of what she feels like because children really pick up a lot of energy. They pick up, and, yeah, they do. And, and if it's know. off, it's, it's gone. That's it. Yeah. yeah, that's a big one. I, like I remember someone saying that they didn't want to to take too much time talking to someone and then introduce them to the child because mm-hmm. what if the child does not, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. take them very well? So they almost were like, we kind of do it in like a. Um, like let's just meet up type thing, that type mm-hmm. of thing, like at a park or something, mm-hmm. and try and kind of get the child's vibe off of it, so they'll know how far to take it. Because they're like, if my child can't, yeah, yeah, that's deal it. with you, why am I going to waste my time? Yeah. yeah, and I think that's that's a good idea too. I wouldn't say introduce too early, but when you feel it's right, because I mean, you mm-hmm. all can go out for you know two or three times. They're like, hey, mm-hmm. let's just get the park and see, you know, mm-hmm. you know, especially you if got- they have kids as well, because they, you know. Yeah. You, you both need to do th- do this, like so. Let's just make yeah. it a, a yeah. public type date. And call yeah, it a you don't have to introduce them either. Like, oh, this is mommy's boyfriend. You're like, this, yeah. you know, just my friend or Mister whoever, you know. And just, just don't say it. uncle. Just don't. Yeah. Don't say uncle. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't know why people do that? That's weird. It is so weird. weird. Yeah, like, I would never do that. It made yeah. me feel some kind of way. Like I it does. Like it sounds it. creepy. At almost. It really does. Because why am I calling you uncle? Yeah. Um, Darren, I was about to ask her. <laughs> yeah, that's creepy. It, it is. is. Um, you were talking about them meeting, you were talking about them meeting your daughter or whatever. So what's like your time frame? Is it like after a couple of dates? And then, or is it just based off of your feeling? Like if you feel like you're kind of like interested in them, then you kind of bring her into it as far as like meeting. Well, honestly, I haven't even, she hasn't even met anybody. She since, haven't, like, okay. Uh-uh, she hasn't, but I think for me, I don't know. It has to be a little bit of my discernment, like when mm-hmm. I feel like it's right. And if I really like the guy, because if I don't really like him or, you know, he already being inconsistent, not, mm-hmm. you ain't meet her. Because yeah. if you're inconsistent with me, I'm not about to bring yeah, her yeah. into the picture in the midst. So I guess, you know, my discernment and then maybe after, you know, a couple of dates or so, mm-hmm. you know. You can see it happening. Yeah. Do you feel like? Oh, sorry, Tori. Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> um. No, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, does she ask you questions about dating, or if you are gonna get married, or anything like that? When the breakup happened, she was kind of sad because she wanted, you know, mom, mm-hmm. like, are you gonna get married? And then at first it was, oh, you can't date nobody but him. Like that's what what her mindset was. But mm-hmm. now she's like, okay, mommy, you can have a boyfriend now. Mm-hmm. So I think she's open to the idea of somebody else coming in the picture at this point. Mm-hmm. So because I good. always wonder, like when kids get, because you said your daughter's like eight or nine, right? She eight, yeah, she's eight. Yeah, I feel like when they get around their friends and they see that family dynamic Mm -hmm. and then if they don't necessarily have it at home it kind of influences influences them to have questions and I always wondered like does that happen to a lot of single parents do their do their kids be like why don't our daddy live with us or why don't Mm -hmm. I have a daddy or a mom yeah yeah well for her she has her dad I mean he's he's in the picture um but he don't live with us (laughs) I mean, he's in the picture, but is you know, his work schedule. So when it is stuff, it's, it's mostly me. And then I do a couple of weeks ago and I was like, everybody else is mom and dad. And it's just me here. And I was like, oh, <laughs> you know, yeah. we, go again, but we were fine. She was happy. But mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know if it bothers her. She never said anything. Mm-hmm. I mean, recently, so I'm, she's just happy that she asked me. So. Well, that's good. That's good. Because yeah. I remember one of my friends saying that their daughter said it was okay for him to start dating. It was time. Yeah. 
told him it was time for him to start dating. I guess because the mom had moved on. Mm -hmm. So she was seeing that. And then she was like, okay, dad, it's (laughs) you need to go ahead and do something. Yeah. (laughs) So I I always thought about that. Like, how does the kids look at that, especially when they get around their peers? Because you never know what they're seeing and what they're hearing these days. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely. Because you'll be surprised at yeah. what they know at eight years old. And you're yeah. ready for it. <laughs> yeah. Not ready. Do you uh do you think now that you would prefer some to date someone with kids or does it matter? It really doesn't matter. Doesn't like, matter? To be honest, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't <laughs> matter. I'm open. I don't think I want a whole bunch, no matter right. the whole bunch of kids. But I mean, I mean maybe one. Mm-hmm. I might one. Do you match. want more? For I yourself? Do. Okay. I do. Yeah, I do. And that time is ticking. So I'm like, <laughs> when you hit 30, I'm like, come on now. Like, because oh. you know, back then I was like, oh, I'm going to be married by 30. I'm going to have this. I'm going to yeah. buy my kids by 30. And look at it. Here yeah. I am. Mm-hmm. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, it happens. You know, you know. What they say, you tell God your plans and he laughs. Yeah, because he laughed, didn't laugh. Laugh right on. Just kept on laughing. <laughs> yeah, laughed you yeah. off the stage. <laughs> Because at first I was like, I don't want more kids. Like, I was like, she's enough just because how she was as a toddler. I was like, mm-hmm. it for me, like, I don't want no more. <laughs> That's it. But now that she's eight, like, she don't really need me. I mean, for the most part, she's mm-hmm. independent. She can do everything pretty much by herself. And it's like, dang, I want another baby. But where am I going to get the baby from? <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, ugh. So with Dude. you being in your, so would you say you're in the career path that you want to be in? um no I mean I am um but it I need more money like in my you know that I am they don't really pay a whole bunch so I'm still like frustrated with that because you know as a single parent everything is literally on you every Mm -hmm. single bill and it's just like it's too much I need another job Mm -hmm. so I'm still (laughs) kind of looking a little bit trying to see where I can apply my current job skills and yeah um, Go elsewhere. I don't know where at this point. I was like, I don't even care <laughs> where it is. I'll, I'll just go. But I mean, I pretty much have, um, you know, I started off in my field young, like at 22. So I'm, you know, have time vested and that's pretty good. Well, to that's be good. Yeah. Cause they like the, the years invested in a yeah. yeah. So would you say with, with that and, you know, having your daughter um, and kind of just living, cause I'm a, I'm a speak it over you, you living your best life. Would you oh, yeah. say would you say that dating is a priority right now for you? Like a top priority? No. 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 I, I wouldn't say it's a top priority right now, honestly. And I was having a conversation with my friend earlier. I was like, I need to quote unquote get this money. Like I'm trying to, you know, <laughs> take my income so I can, you know, provide my door to myself mm-hmm. with, you know, more things that we want and you know, like to do. But I mean. I'm human, so I do get lonely. So, I mean, it would be nice to have someone, but I mean, if it's not my time, then I'm just trying to be content with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for someone that has went through various stages of dating, engaged, having a child, what would be some advice you would give to a newly single mom that is trying to navigate the dating world? <sighs> <laughs> I would say just you know just take care of yourself because I know when I went through that breakup oh I didn't want to get my hair I just felt <laughs> like I felt like I looked how I was you know what I was going through like I didn't want to you know I felt guilty about doing things for myself like it, it did a lot to my self-esteem like to be honest like it did because it's like you know but when I was you know talking to other people and looking on YouTube, everything, it's more common than you think, but I felt like I was the only person in the world that went through, like, you get close to getting married, and then, boom, it's just, like, it's over, mm-hmm. you know, so. Did you I, seek any therapy? Oh, yeah, right. I'm still okay. in therapy. <laughs> My therapist's been with me since 2020, so she, I, know that's I don't right. even want to start over, because I'm like, she knows the beginning, you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah. It was a lot. I had to talk to somebody to make sense of what was going mm-hmm. on, and it was a point I was like you know what maybe it's just me like because I don't know like <laughs> like maybe it's something I'm doing wrong you know so I was kind of like hard on myself a lot you know about yeah. the breakup so, so yeah. I would just be, you know take care of yourself and be patient because 
some people try to rush the healing process and there's no mm-hmm. time limit to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wake up yeah. one day, you can be good. And if they, you cry, like I, you know, I think I cried a couple of weeks ago, like last week or the week before. And I don't, I don't know where it came from. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Cause I'm yeah. like, I'm at a place where I really don't miss him. Like I used to, I don't want to see him. Like, so it's like, I don't know, but it's like a breakup to your grieving a loss. Like people don't yeah. realize that because you yeah. with this person every day and then you don't y'all strangers now. So it's like, that was, you know, my best friend. I consider him, you know, mm-hmm. so it was like, you know, God, will I ever have that again? You know, that's what I think because I know it's possible to be true, but I'm like, when you look out here at these men, it's just like, <laughs> you just kind of lose hope a little bit, you know? Yeah. And I try not to be the one, you know, a lot of women bash men and all that stuff. I try not to be like that, you know, because I do want to, you know, marry a black man, you know. I mean, I'm open to anybody, but, you know, I prefer to date a black man, but I'm like, the most pain in my life has been caused by black men. And Mm. it's, you know. That's deep. Yeah. I mean, but I still love them. Yeah, but they have caused the most pain in my life. So when he tried to reconcile, did he bring any type of closure or, I mean, what was he at least honest? Yeah. Why? You know what I mean? I mean, yes, it was a little bit of, he's very close with his parents, you know, and they were too involved a little bit kind of, you know, but yeah, he did all of that, you know, and that's why I was so confused. Like when he jumped into summer school, you were literally just crying in my <laughs> well, you know, taking me to look at another ring. And then you proposed to somebody else a couple months later. I was so confused. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's interesting. Very interesting. I, I, like, I always want to pick men's brain when it when they just do mm-hmm. little stuff like just, that. Like Yeah, but then he starts turning into like uh where he started to bash me on social media like just crazy I'm like what are you doing like you know for me like females will do stuff like that I wouldn't do it mm-hmm. but I'm like that's guilt like because who does that you know yeah, yeah. and, and then that, that could be his sign of sh- that could be him showing that he was starting to hurt it was really starting mm-hmm. to get mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure he still is but I mean more power to him <laughs> <laughs> because sometimes people like like they really do like to go ahead and just like all right let me just put another person in this very same picture and I'm yeah. not going to deal with what I'm carrying I'm mm-hmm. going to and paint thing, over it and keep it moving yeah. but you can't do that you have to deal with that and the thing with me too that I think kind of you know get them is I blocked all access so this man can't find me on no social media <laughs> Mm. can't find me on he can't call me he can't do anything and men hate that because they love to watch because it was a point where we were broken up my page was public watching just watching everything I'm doing Mm -hmm. yeah just watching and to them that's measuring yeah and then he would do the thing where he would block me and just manipulation then when I seen he unblocked me I was like oh boom block and he's been blocked to this day for like (laughs) over I'm not playing those things like I'm not and I was at a point where I was willing really you know, it is what it is. Let's, you know, we can work it out. Cause I honestly, I didn't even really care about the wedding. Like that was so stressful. Like I don't even think I would want to go through that process again, mm-hmm. but I didn't have time for the games. Like I'm not about to, we're not about to do this. So blah. Yeah, that's so. Do you think because he knew you so well, well, I'm not gonna say so well, but for so long that men know what to do to get to you. Right. Yeah, and it's even like, like I said, we went to the same homecoming. So, uh, I mean, not same homecoming, Lord, I'm going to get on homecoming, but we went to the same college. So, you know, homecoming came around and of course he come, he bring the girl and, you know, people was like, oh, such and such was that. I was like, I was calculating, like, I know him well enough. I was like, he's going to do that because he wants a reaction out of me mm-hmm. and he's trying to live like this person is better than me. And one thing, you know, I learned about men and I heard a lot of people say that they don't really change. I mean, they do if they take the time to heal, but Mm -hmm. men like that, they just jump up. They don't change. They just change women. Mm -hmm. Like, and she don't know him. So he wanted to come and look like, oh, he got somebody better. And, you know, I ain't even come. He didn't even see me. (laughs) (laughs) And my friends were like, he looking like, oh, you know. (laughs) We're raving it. He didn't see me. Because I was like, I'm not giving him that satisfaction. So you went back home looking stupid. Because you didn't, it, it didn't work. <laughs> oh it my didn't God, work. that is hilarious. So, so with that type of trait in his personality, was that present while y'all were together? 
or is that just a little bit? That, yeah, he can okay. show off. Like I'm more of like, uh, I'm more. I don't like to be in the spotlight. To be honest, like I'm surprised I'm up here talking to y'all. Like, I don't like talking <laughs> to people. I don't like a lot of attention on me. Like I don't. Girl, we the same. That's do what stuff we do with the the <laughs> But he's like that. He loves social media. He got the oh look at me, look at me, look at me, and everybody mm-hmm. sees it. So like in my mind, I was like, he gonna do it. And honestly, in the back of my mind, I was like. He might end up proposing to this girl because his his ammo is I was wrong, you know I you know did uh, you know so yeah. he's gonna take it to that far and I was like I hope he ain't that you know but he and went on and did it that far. yeah yeah they will take it that far but I don't I don't have respect you know for people like that because I mean especially when I'm a, a good person I know everybody say they're a good person but I, I don't really bother anybody mm-hmm. anybody can vouch for that like I don't even. You really have to push me like to a point <laughs> for making my child for me to get out of character. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm definitely I'm at the mature age where I was like, I'm not putting myself in a position to react. So I was like, it's just best I not go. Like, because mm-hmm. I don't know what, you know. So are you do you feel a little fearful that if you do meet someone and you connect with them that that, that yeah. can transpire? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna be very honest with the person because I mean, okay. even guys now, like they by me and they was like, Oh, you were engaged, they want to know what happened. So I don't even feel like going into mm-hmm. detail. I just you know, sum it up, he didn't want to be married. I mean, to me, that's the reality of it. I mean, cause if he did, we would <laughs> I would be talking about being a single mom. <laughs> so I mean, you know, so I'm very honest with them, you know, about that. And I am fearful, like, cause somebody can take you to that point and then just leave like yeah that's scary Mm -hmm. even for my dad like my family they're like for you to come and ask for my daughter's hand in marriage Mm -hmm. and then you know not only that my granddaughter is involved like that's yeah yeah Yeah. so what you saying you are intentional about dating are you intentional about what type of person you want to date so do you write it down do you speak it into the atmosphere do you proclaim it honestly to be honest I haven't lately because I felt like I did all that with him and I got that but it was some things that I left off I was like you know I want a man that's strong mind and have a good heart not too close not saying you can't be close with your family but Mm -hmm. just have those boundaries and he didn't have that Mm-hmm. So it's a little stuff I need to go back to the you know right now. Revise, revise the list. <laughs> and I went to you and I you you brought him and he had all those characteristics, but then and I missed all you know a lot of things. But I think for a man just respecting me and having a good heart, a lot of men aren't. I mean, I don't want to say that because I don't want to say men aren't good people. But a lot that I have ran into, they aren't good people. Like to be honest, because even if you don't want to be with me, it's the way you go about doing things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's not had nothing you, you know about you not wanting to be with me like you would still move in a respectful manner and a lot of them don't like they just they ghost you they drag your name like it's just a lot of stuff I'm like I don't want to deal with that mm-hmm. yeah. so did you learn a lot about yourself and what you would need to revamp in your life to yeah be, yeah. be in another position yeah, because I honestly, like, even with the split, nobody's perfect. So I wouldn't even sit up here and say I was, you know, 100%, you know, perfect. But one thing I can say that I was willing to work on things, you know, mm-hmm. you know, to be with him, I was willing to do anything, like, you know. So, I mean, nobody's perfect and nobody knows how to be a wife until you're a wife. Like, even, you know, just being engaged, you're, you know, is harder than what most people think because you're literally trying to blend your life with this person. Even though we didn't make it down the aisle, it was still... Yeah. Some work. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think a lot of people, I don't know, I think society has taken away like what really happens when you live with someone. Oh, yeah. Um, we live together. That was- when you mm-hmm. share space and when you're bringing two different worlds together, mm-hmm. it is not explained of how hard it can be. It's not it's explained about living styles and preferences mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, that's a lot. Th- that's conversations you got to have continually. Yeah. Mm-hmm. About but nobody really shares yeah. that. Mm-mm. Yeah. They just want to go ahead and do it. And then it's like, okay. <laughs> well, such and such and such and such. You know, because even when we were together and we went to, you know, premarital counseling, it was things he would say, oh, you not doing this. And the counsel was like, what did you tell her? And I was like, oh, well, he ain't doing this. What did you tell him? And I'm like, no. So how can you expect this person to do it if you didn't mm-hmm. tell him, you know? 
So we kind of had that's, that's real. Yeah, we had expectations <laughs> of each other that we never voiced, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, but it's a learning think, experience. Yeah, it's a learning experience. But for me, honestly, I don't think I would live with another guy again. <laughs> <laughs> Not that it was a bad experience with him at all. Like, I'm just fearful that you would leave me, like, just abandon mm -hmm. me and leave again. So I'm like, when do I do it? Because, I mean, you kind of want to live with it before you get married. But it's like, I'm just fearful, like, at this point, like, of even. Yeah. It's a lot. That. Yeah. You know, once you've already been down that road and, it's, yeah. you know, that fear does come, you know, I don't. I can only imagine it if, you know, once you've been married or once you've been engaged. But once you. Yeah cohabitate yeah it don't work well, out it. yeah I see why they say don't do it but I mean we do it like they say don't have sex before marriage but we still do it but I see now like why they say you know don't do it like I really do I was like yes. I really see why because you'll just be dealing with stuff you know just because old ties are real yeah mm -hmm. yeah so I'll They're be very real yeah mm -hmm. so well, all right oh, so you got any more good. questions it was. I don't have any more. I'm just over here just smiling and looking. I know. Like, oh, this is a good conversation. This is a good I mean, I'm very much interested. You know, just we 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 all have our own stories and backgrounds of of, of dating and heartbreak and going mm -hmm. through some real heartbreak and some else. stuff. And you know, I'm 34, so to me, I'm like, I gotta start over as a middle because I'm about to be middle aged. <laughs> <laughs> woman and like you look I was talking like if I go any any older I'm gonna be dating somebody that's my dad's age because my parents are in their 50s so what am I gonna yeah. do yeah at this point I, I mean how I feel about that <laughs> yeah if we have to go there then I mean no, the, um, like, hey, man, <laughs> this, is your, this is your peer <laughs> yeah that's my crazy. dad definitely wouldn't like that mm -mm. Yeah. no and I don't think because I they people don't yeah, they don't want kids at that age, you know, and I want more. So. <laughs> I hope not. I mean, they may be. Like, but you said 40, so 40 year old, they they nah. might want one. Yeah. If they I can meet like, 40 okay. year old, like, I don't even know. We, like you said, where do you meet them? <laughs> where where do you right. Meet them? Where do you meet them? Right. Right. I, I know one thing. You, so when you put out energy of like when you, where you want to meet people and how you want to meet people, you, you got to be ready for that because I'm going to give you an example. So I had an experience where I'm one of those. I like, I want it to come so natural. I don't want to kind of be in a mm -hmm. setting where it's, it's made for it to happen. So I was like, God, just let it happen. Like if I'm in a grocery store or anything. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So for the first time, I saw someone that actually made me get all jittery. I have not felt Ooh. this since my relationship yeah. ended. And I look like somebody <laughs> that just got off the interstate holding the sign. I look a hot. Oh my, I was so embarrassed, y'all. I was trying to hide behind the eye. Like, I was like, oh my God, why did I do this? But I manifested it. I said it, yeah, but I didn't yeah. say how I was supposed to be. Like, I didn't say, well, Lord, let me be <laughs> fit for this. Yeah, oh my God, I was so embarrassed. I thought about this thing for like two days. I was like, why did I do that? Why? This is the first person that I felt like, like it made me like, <laughs> I'm peeping through the aisles looking. I said, who is that? And here I am with a hoodie yeah. on baggy sweatpants a toboggan and a shirt wrapped around my waist just got done working out and i was so embarrassed i was looking homeless looking homeless look at home. <laughs> i yeah. said nisha turl was in here she would have popped me she would you don't ever leave the house looking like that and i did it mm -hmm. and here and look what happens and i'm like see you got to be careful about what you put out there you better be ready i was not yeah. ready no. yeah that was Mr. Bliss. Girl, I, now I look, I went back and revamped <laughs> my list and yeah. said, nope, Alexis, you now you have to be ready when you leave that house. Mm -hmm. You can't say yeah. you want a random person or just a random vibe to happen and you looking like you looking. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to be in position. You got to be ready for what you're doing. Yeah. 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 Go back I to like my lesson. <laughs> I got funny. a whooping that day. <laughs> I was so embarrassed, y'all. Oh my god, that is hilarious! Yeah, and you know you messed up when you can't stop thinking about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> it's getting to me now. Like, yeah. how, why did I do that? Just mad at yourself. Mad. I'm no, like, girl. I just need some more tea. That's all I say. I'm just going to run in here. Mm-hmm. I ain't got Nala with me. I'm just going to run in here, get yeah. some tea. I'm five minutes. And then them five minutes, look what happened. I'm like, this don't make no John Brown sense. Don't make no sense. <laughs> I was hurt. But Raven, we are so glad that you came and shared with us your perspective you. of being a single mom and dating. Mm-hmm. Um, is there anything else you want to share or leave with us? I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> <For> having me. <laughs> <laughs> Look, thank you for sharing your story. I'm um I'm sure it'll help somebody. Um yeah. I think we all go through things so that we can help the next yeah. person in line. And I think that your story will definitely help somebody. Um so thank you for being open and sharing that. Um, for all of our listeners, if you would like to follow us on Instagram, please follow us at Real Talk Podcast. That is um, R E A L T L K Podcast. And that is on Instagram. Um, let us know what you think about this topic. Um, give us any feedback that you may have. Give us any stories that you may have about being a single mother in this non existent dating world. <laughs> <laughs> And we will talk to you guys soon. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Real Talk with Toya, Lex, and Chris. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.